my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. <laughs> Hey, I'm Klaus Levine from GuitarMastery.net and I'm here to give you an exclusive lesson on how to integrate 313 pentatonic shapes with your old regular first position uh, two note per string pentatonic. You know, the one we all learn in the beginning when we start soloing. Um, because the main benefits of this is that you can start to play very rapid bursts of pentatonic notes with very little work. And you can integrate something that most people shy away from because ugh, it's too difficult. There's a lot of scale shapes I have to learn and what's really the benefit of it. We take one little thing and we implement it into something you know already, that you can play already. So from that standpoint or from that point of view, you can then move out into the new thing and then back into what you know already. That's the most powerful way of learning something new is to integrate it with something that you use already because then you will actually use it when you play with the guys or play on stage. So let's have a look at it. Let's go close up and take a look at our sequence and our 313 shapes here. So we got our first position, E minor, pentatonic shape right here with all the notes of the first finger in the 12th fret. And then I got the 15th fret on the B and E. So I got that minor third interval between these two notes. And then I got the 14th fret on the G, 14 and 12 on the G, and the same thing on the D and the A, and then 15 and 12 on the low E. And that's a really cool shape because we got that first finger in the same fret. So it's a really cool uh, shape to, to phrase in. And then we can lay it out, but it has its limitations, right? Because it's a little bit hard to play really fast, unless you're Joe Bonamassa, but, but it has its limitations. And if we lay it out in a slightly different way, then we suddenly have some new options. And that way is to say, it's really a matter of putting less strain on this hand, on this picking action here, and then bringing some of the strain or challenge to the left hand, because it's easier. So what I do here, and please don't stop this video just because it looks hard, because it, it really isn't once you get into it. 12, 14, and we're just gonna do one shape here. 12, 14, and uh, 16 on the G. So you can mark that out on your head. That's the first three shape. And then we have one note on the B string. We're simply just playing the scale, right? It's the same notes we're playing but we're laying them out in a different way so we can use sweep picking and hammer-ons and pull-offs to really get the job done. 12, 14, and 16 on the G, 15 on the B, then 12, 15, and 17 on the high E string. And if you have any trouble doing these intervals, like two whole tones with your first, second, and fourth finger, or a minor third and a whole tone on the high E with your first, third, and fourth finger, then I promise you, this is not harder than doing this. You know, this is not harder than playing this type of thing. It's just new. We forget that. We think, oh, this is much harder. It's not. If this has been, if this was your beginning point, right? This was what you were being presented with when you started learning the pentatonic scale in the beginning. This would have been hard, right? The two notes of string would have been hard. So it's just new. So just, you know, go into it like it's any other thing. So we got 12, 15, and 17 on the high E string. Right? Why we, would we want to play that shape like this? Well, because we can do stuff like this. I have a little bit of sweep picking action in there, and I have some hammer-ons and pull-offs. And no alternate picking. Right? <laughs> A little bit on one string, but no alternate picking string shifts, which makes this much easier to learn very fast. So let's just look into what am I doing here. Um, I'm simply just, you know, you can you can pick the first note in the 12th fret 
and then hammer on your second finger to the 14th and hammer on your fourth finger to the 16th and then pull them off again. And be sure to really hammer on with the tip of your finger and pull off by flicking the string. And if you see your fingers jumping far away from the fretboard like that, then that's because you're really doing it right. You're really practicing hammering on, right? And if it feels like the string is sticky when you pull off, then that's a sure sign that you're really pulling off, right? So that's the first thing. Pick the first note in the 12th fret, hammer on, hammer on, pull off, pull off, 14 and 16. Okay, so once I've done that, I hit the 16th fret again on the same string and then sweep my way, simply two downstrokes, to the 15th fret on the B string and then the 12th fret on the high E string. So I go, and then, right, down, down, down. And it can be a bit of a challenge to keep that in time because it's so easy to sweep down. But you can use some metronome. But be sure it's just one sweep and not three individual downstrokes. So you go... Once you, you get to this point here, you just do the same thing. You hammer on to the 15th and hammer on to the 17th, third and fourth finger, and then pull off again down to the 12th. So up and down on the same string. There you go. Alright, let's try that again. And from here, now I have this note ringing out. I go up in the 15th fret B string and up in the 16th fret G string. And then up, up. And then I hit the uh, 12th fret G string again, and then I start from the first note again. So I go, and then, and then, and then up 15B, up 16G, and then a, a downstroke here in the 12th fret on the G string, and then. Up, up, down, 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 down. Up, up, down. You can do the first, the hammer-ons, you can uh, replace those with uh, alternate picking strokes. So I go, right, down, up, down, pull off, pull off, and then down, 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 up, down, pull off, pull off, up, up, right? So just think about it like every hammer-on re gets replaced with a pick stroke. Let me just play it for you slowly with hammer-ons and pull-offs and then slowly with uh, the added pick strokes. That's the whole full circle and you begin there again with pick strokes. So that's it. You can continue the same thing if you want to, but I really urge you to stay here and really get 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 this before you move on. But just so you know, you can expand that down here to the 12th, 14th, and to the 17th fret. This gives you a whole tone and a minor third. Might be a bit of a challenge, so just stick with this first. But just so you have it, 14, 12, 14, and 17, and then the lonely note on the one string, the three, the one in the 313 is in the 14th fret on the D string. So the whole shape looks like this. Then you're back to the... Alright. And you can of course go... Oops. Alright. So that's the whole concept, but the next thing you need to do is not just go for that. You need to really integrate it with the first position minor. That's why we play it here, right? So you can go... Just play one instance of the sequence. And then look at your first position blues scale shape and say, okay, what do I want to do from here? Right? You know, if I'm playing down here... 
I also don't have to play the sequence, I can just use the, sh the shape. Right? Right on. Right, it becomes like an explosion of notes right there when you use it. Actually, we should do the next lesson and really focus on, you know, playing some licks and make cool examples of how you can utilize this. So let's do that next time. But for now, focus on this shape and the sequence and then ending it in the cool way. So you... Okay, where do you want to go? You know... Right? Integrate it as much as you can with the first position by going... Starting something... Don't, don't think about how many notes you play, or whether it's 16 notes or triplets or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just just go. If you, you know, just start it. Do whatever you can to play around with the two shapes and go back and forth within them. So I hope you're up for it. Take this little shape. Just a three-string shape and implement it into your pentatonic playing. And even if the thing ah, it feels awkward, it's you know, start with one string and just say this week, every time I'm just fooling around playing some stuff in my first position blue scale shape or pentatonic shape, then I'm just gonna focus and force myself to just use that layout on the top string of the three uh, three notes there. Just go right, implement it. And remember to do it just over a week. Then take the next thing. Then take the G string. And then gradually you will be able to play the sequence and also practice the sequence, you know, with the metronome in front of the TV, sitting in the couch. Everywhere you can just go up and down the pick strokes, the over and over and over again. And I promise you, if you'll do that with this first position shape, it's, you know, all roads are open to you suddenly because then you can do the technique and, you know, it looks the same way across the fretboard. Then you can take another position, then you can cover another set of strings in the first position. And pretty soon you'll be, you know, playing these fast bursts of notes uh, without thinking about it.